about three years ago or so, I actually took the back seats out of the Tacoma and I went ahead and did a seat delete all just out of wood. Back then all I had was just like a little hand skill saw that I borrowed from my parents. But now that I got all my own tools, I think I'm gonna go ahead and redo it. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replicate this both 80-20, some nice compression latches and nice soft closed slides and all that jazz. And then this is actually gonna flip I'll show you. Here's with the original seat delete out of the truck. Uh, what I was using to secure it to the truck, the factory bolt holes for the seats, just some aluminum tabs and I had studs on there and then these little hand knobs. So easy to take out. What I'm gonna do actually, I don't have it right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and sound deaden this whole thing. Cause as you can imagine, the cab does have quite a bit of a noise after you remove the seats and all that stuff. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try to help that while I'm here. So here's the design that I actually uh, sketched up to figure out what size I needed to order for each piece because I use tnuts.com and what you do there is you go ahead and pick out the type of extrusion that you want and then you enter in the length and they will send it to you pre-cut and they'll even uh, go ahead and pre-tap the ends so when you're going to screw everything together uh, it's just as simple as kind of like building uh, Legos in a way. So if you want to go ahead and maybe screenshot this or pause it and do like a rough sketch of your own, that way you can kind of figure out exactly what I ordered. Here is my cut and hardware list from tnuts.com. So these are all my extrusion cuts. Uh, so this is quantity, length, and the size, which is the 10 series. This is a one inch by one inch. First thing we're going to do is assemble both sides of our drawers. So you can see I've already assembled one here. And what I did is I started off with our small pieces here. These are our five and a quarter cuts that we got and then our three-way corner connectors. And they just connect by one of the screws that threads into the end of our pre-tapped uh, pieces that we bought. All right, we've got our two rectangle ends all assembled and I haven't really locked down all those screws yet. They're just kind of snug, just in case when I have to do some adjustments later. Next, you just go ahead and pretend this is one by one and not one by two. When I was ordering this stuff, I really thought that my drawer slide was gonna be able to mount on the second slot up once this was vertical, but there's just not enough room. So I'm actually gonna mount it flat like this. As I was saying with our parts list, uh, this is uh, one by one and not one by two, but since I already have it, I'm just gonna go ahead and use it. As you can see, these little nubs on our corner joiners, go ahead and line those up, and we're gonna go ahead and put one screw in here, um, and then we're gonna do the same over there, and then we'll go ahead and join this one on the opposite end. All right, so you saw we assembled the two outer rectangles and the two bottom bars. You'll find as we go along with this, you're gonna have to assemble and disassemble certain things as you go, because this is quite literally a puzzle. So next we're gonna work on these bars right here, which is what the drawer slides are gonna mount to. So in our parts list, that is our 25 inch uh, pieces of one by one extrusion. As you can see on these drawer slides, there is one, two, and then three, mounting spots. So basically you're just gonna take your T-slot nuts, which these actually drop in. Uh, you don't have to slot them in from the side. They kind of drop into place. Basically what I've done here is I've arranged the T-slot nuts so they line up with our holes in our drawer slides themselves. So next you can just set the drawer slide on top of your piece of extrusion. And then once you set it on top, you can see your T-slot nuts through your holes there. So these are the same type of screws that we used for the rest of our extruded aluminum, but they're actually just a little shorter. That way they don't bottom out on the extrusion um, and not tighten down on the slides. I actually had to take the grinder and shorten them just a tad. I did that with a nut, uh, thread it all the way on, so then when you thread the nut back off, it'll clean it up 
and let you be able to install it. Another step we are gonna take, we are not gonna use Loctite, but what we are gonna use is actually some fingernail polish. And this is a trick that carries over from gunsmithing. Uh, a lot of people use it on scopes and stuff of that nature. It's just like Loctite pretty much. Um, you, in the event that you have to unscrew it, it's not gonna be completely stuck. Which is pretty important when you're dealing with Allens because they're not typically the best as far as not stripping on you. So do recommend using fingernail polish on any screws that you don't want to rattle loose throughout this project. Another thing you can see I've done here is I've lined the edge of the slide up right with the edge of the extrusion. All right, uh, so just like I told you a few minutes ago, you're gonna have to take some things apart after you put them back together. Went ahead and took the top bar off each side. It's just two screws. And then, because what we're working on is getting our bars in for our drawer slides to attach to. And then what I did was completely remove the screw that goes into here, and I just loosened that one. Um, and the whole reason for that is these hidden corner connectors, they have to slide in. They can't just drop in like the other T-slot nuts. So you do that so you can drop that in. And then this is going to be in the center here. So that's going to support the bottom of this, which is going to be exactly halfway in between the whole structure. And then as you can see, I've put another hidden corner connector here and two on the middle and then one at the end. So basically the 25 inch piece is going to slide into these hidden corner connectors. And this is going to kind of tie in the whole structure right here. All right, so there you go. This side's just all loosely on. I haven't tightened anything down yet. As you can see, the drawer slides will come out right there. And they relax back in their position. Before I tighten all this up, because I'm also gonna have to move this out to get that other hidden corner connector in there, I'm gonna flip this around, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. All right, so we set what we've already made over there out of the way. Next, this is gonna be the piece that goes on top of what we've already made. Basically, it consists of two 51 inch one by one pieces, and then four 15 and a half inch. Uh, the ones on the end are the one pieces that we pulled off earlier. Before you do anything, go ahead and slide in two hidden corner connectors on each of the 51 inch pieces. Those are gonna be used for the lateral support for the top. Okay, so as far as spacing on these goes, 51 inch bar, 51 divided by three is 17. So go ahead and line the center up with 17 um, and then pull 17 from this side as well. Next, we're gonna attach our ends. There's our assembled top. Uh, everything is just loosely kind of put together so it still has got some wiggle. Next, we're gonna set it on top of our frame here and get it all connected. All right, here's the main module all assembled. I'm not gonna worry about putting panels on these sides and closing them in. They're not really gonna be visible and this is gonna keep stuff from falling in from the backside. But if you were to want to do that, these slots are six millimeter, which is basically a quarter inch. So you can get some quarter inch plywood and you could have cut an insert to size and slipped it down in there, kind of, you know, block all this whole side out. Wasn't really a big deal for me, so I'm not super worried about it. Uh, and then the top, uh, we're gonna be using half inch uh, birch plywood. So that's gonna sit on top of this stuff and not recessed in, because I want a nice flat surface. All right, next we're gonna move on and we're gonna do the folding ledge. That's gonna be bridging the gap in between the drawers and the back seats. So we got two 51 inch pieces of the one by one. Then we got four five and a half inch pieces of the one by one. We're gonna do corner connectors for this back side. And then the front side, I'm actually gonna do these angled connectors. I think it might look kinda cool. And then these are our hinges, which will attach on the back side there and allow it to flip and pivot. All 
All right, we got our folding uh, front all assembled. That's These will be facing forwards towards the front of the truck. Here is our hinges that'll allow us to be able to flip it up. That actually comes with some T-slot nuts and some hardware. So basically you just bolt it to this, and then the other side will bolt to the other one. Um, and they'll be able to attach together. Probably, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and space it in the middle of the outside section. I probably could have done three, but this isn't really gonna see much weight or anything like that. So it should be perfectly fine. All right, we got the construction of our first drawer done, minus the face. We won't be able to put that on until we mock it up in the drawer itself. So basically this is half inch hardwood plywood. I originally tried to make them out of half inch birch. They're sitting right there. And I really wasn't a big fan of them. So I redid them out of hardwood and it turned out way better. I redid the design, but it's half inch all the way around. The other one was quarter inch on the bottom. And then I just kind of made this a lot more sturdy. So basically it's finished nailed along the sides, that's how the base is held. Um, and then the back, it's finished nailed. And as far as our sizes go, this is 24 inches long, because that's how long our drawer is. It's about 13 and a half inches wide. It's got to fit inside the walls of this. And then our face of it is 15 and 3 eighths of an inch wide, which is a funny size, but we made it like that because we got to have some slack on the sides to allow the Raptor liner coating on the drawer face. So there's some wiggle room in that opening right there. And then same with the height of it, I did five and eighth tall. So it's one of those things you're gonna have to eyeball it um, and give yourself, you know, a 16th of a gap around the whole thing. And then as far as the back, we went ahead and did four and a half inch depth on the drawers. And then that's 14 and a half inches wide, which is as wide as our opening in between the slides. And then our sides are 24 inches and also four and a half inches tall. And all I did is I have this corner jig thing, put the back and the side in the jig, took the finish nailer, secured those, did the other side and then I put the base on the bench and kind of put my U that I created around it I and mean, kind of clamped it down and pressed it up against the side and then ran my finish nails through the hardwood and into the base to secure it. Okay, now that we got our main boxes of our drawers made, what we're gonna do is attach our faces. Now to do that and to get them attached in the correct place, what I've done is I've taken a scrap quarter inch piece of birch, just laid it across there to space our drawer up a little bit because obviously you don't want it rubbing this as it's coming in and out. And then I've also taken my face here and you can kind of place it where it's gonna be. But then you're gonna channel your gaps here. So you can move it over to the side and you wanna make sure the gap on each side is even. And once these are even, don't worry about this up and down gap because we can adjust that with our side rails later on. So you can go ahead and let that sit flush on the bottom. Make sure your side gaps are even. Now what you're gonna do is basically figure out where the drawer lands on your front here. And then you're gonna make a little mark and then you can take your finish nailer or whatever you're using. I'm just gonna do two finish nails on each side to actually attach it to the module we already made. All right, you saw I got it all sanded down and everything like that. I figured I'd go ahead and get my holes figured of where my drawer is going to attach to the slides. Basically what I did is with the drawer closed, took a ruler and measured how much space um, until the slide started. And then I, I popped the drawer out until these holes were exposed. Um, and I chose this slotted hole because it was going to allow me to choose how far recessed this face was gonna be in after the fact. This just adjusts up and down, but we have up and down adjustment right here. So don't really need that. When it's straight in the middle on uh, both sides, uh, once I got those secured, moved on to the second one, and then the third one, you end up peeking through one of these holes. And then once it's all said and done, tighten them all down, and you can see it's nice and smooth, and you can see all my gaps are nice and even all the way around. I did have to go and adjust our hidden corner bracket right here and move this just a little bit just to make our 
up and down gaps even because remember this was sitting flush when we put our face on but yeah now that you uh have all that adjustability you can really make it sit perfect in the 80 20 frame that you made and uh make it work real nice and smooth just looks great Okay, so looking at the back of the truck, where the drawer is gonna sit, the one edge is gonna rest right on this carpet and right on this tall side. And these brackets that we're gonna end up using to secure, these are from the old drawers. If you look closely, this is higher than the back of this. So to take care of that, what we're doing is taking another piece of our half inch hardwood, which is 12 inches wide and approximately 52 and three quarter inches long. Kind of just a scrap piece I had. It could be a little longer if you want, but the drawers end about right here. And I, I kind of liked how it's recessed back a little bit so you almost can't even really see it. Yeah, the one side of the drawers is actually gonna rest on here. You can see the line that I drew. The drawers will come all the way to right here. And then I have some L brackets on the back side that I'm gonna put on the drawers and basically I can screw it to this piece of wood right here to also help kind of tie everything together and keep it from rattling. I originally debated on putting a piece of wood standing up back here, and after looking at it, it's gonna get rid of a bunch of space that I like to use, because I like to put a lot of stuff back here behind the drawers, kind of tucked down in, so that way it would eliminate, I mean, inches of room. So I'm, I'm just not gonna do that. I'll end up doing the sound deadening along the back wall, and I think that'll be good enough for me. Okay, so now we're working on getting our latches in the correct placement. On our drawer face, you have to make a rectangle in the drawer face for these to work because they recess down in. Luckily, those other birch drawers that I wasn't a big fan of gave me an opportunity to figure out what tools I wanted to use to cut the hole, the placement of the hole. So I was pretty thankful for that. On this one, I used a jigsaw. I took a drill bit and drilled a hole in the center and then took a jigsaw and cut it out. As you can see, it's not quite a perfect one, but it worked pretty good and that ended up being the correct space I needed for this to contact the extrusion. This one I use a router, which if you're using a router, it can come out super clean. I'm not the steadiest hand for a router, um, so it came out kind of decent. And then after doing those two, I had enough confidence, I'd go ahead and do my actual drawers. So what I did is I basically just flipped one of these upside down on top of this, made sure it's all square, and then I traced out the hole so I had some pencil marks. Then I drilled a hole with the drill, then took my router and went ahead and followed my outline. As you can see, it fits in there nicely. It's nice and center, and this sticks out just enough. You want it to stick out above the drawer because when you open it, it goes down and allows you to open it, and then when you shut it, it actually presses up against the extrusion, which will be right here. And that's how it keeps it shut. It actually comes with an adjustable screw and stuff like that. But the way this half inch plywood is lined up, I think it's gonna land just about perfect without the screw or anything in there. So it's gonna be nice and clean. And then the back side, there's a bracket. I'll show you how that attaches, but we'll go ahead and cut our next one. All right, here we got uh, both of our holes routed for our latches. As you can see, um, I'm not the most perfect <laughs> router operator, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, it gets covered up by this. So now that we got our latches, uh, all of our holes figured out, what we got to do still is rafter line both our top pieces for our drawer system. And then also we're going to rafter line that board that I showed you on the inside of the cab that's going to level the drawers out. All right, we got all of our wood pieces out here. All debris is free of the surfaces. Taped off all of the drawer besides the face here because that's the only thing i wanted coated this is like a tape and plastic combo it's pretty cool there's a tape on one end and it has plastic on the other it makes it super easy to cover stuff up this is the coating we're going to use it's a raptor liner it's basically like a bed liner you'd use for truck beds i've used this on a few projects including my last trailer build this is the hardener you'll end up pouring in there and then you shake it for a total of two minutes it can be rolled on with like a regular like paint roller or you can spray it it's going to be using my little craftsman pancake compressor the bottle screws onto there, your pressure regulator that basically determines the how the finish is going to come out, but then you just spray. It's uh, real simple and it works great.
All right, guys, everything's all coated. Pulled it in the garage here. Turned on my new heater I just got, actually, to give some temperature control. We're going to let this cure for probably three to four days, honestly. Uh, I just want to make sure it's nice and solid before I start messing with it. I still have to drill those holes and all the edges so I can attach it to the drawer module. All right, guys, it's been a few days. The rafter liner, I would say, is cured enough. Now I'm kind of laying out how I want to secure this to the top of the module. I got these screws right here kind of sitting in their rough position. If you remember, there's a support here and here. There are three sections. So what I'm going to do is do two, 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 the end two, and then same on the other side. All right, so whenever I go to attach that whole top piece, which would be our top finished board, I'm going to have to drill holes in the edge of it that end up lining up perfectly with this T-nut. So this screw is going to have to go through my top board and then line up with this thread. I mean, I was thinking how that was going to be a little tricky, especially having to drill so many holes around the whole thing. So I figured I'd make a little jig. So basically all I did was take some scrap wood from the other part of the project and then I made it so it butts up against the extrusion. I gave it a little gap here just so if the wood was overhanging a little bit, it wasn't going to throw the hole off. And then basically all I did was use this scrap piece of wood, made a mark right in the center and transferred it up to this. And then I took my drill bit and drilled a hole straight through the jig and straight through this to make my jig hole. And then I did another test hole right here, lined up perfectly again. Now when I go to attach my top piece, I have my little guide here. All I gotta do is run it down the edges, drill my holes, and then obviously line it up with my T-nuts and put my screws in and tighten them down. I've got a few of my holes drilled here. This jig is actually working uh, absolutely awesome. So what I did, you can write with a pencil on this extrusion and it erases. So I'm marking where I want the holes. And then what I've done with my jig is I took a Sharpie, made a mark that lines up where the hole is. So then when I go to drill my hole, all I do is line up my Sharpie mark with my pencil mark on my extrusion and my hole ends up exactly where I want it. You can see here the holes come out super clean. Really happy with how those are. I was worried about it pulling up the rafter liner and maybe like chipping it, but I think I let it cure just long enough. All right, we got the drawers all installed. They are uh, in there for good this time. You can see the drawers function real nice. Go ahead and locks like that. Presses right up against there, nice and tight, no rattling. Uh, what we're gonna do next is secure the top piece on here. So what I've done is I've left all my pencil marks where I was drilling the holes. Now I've lined up a T-slot nut right where the bolts are gonna go down through the wood. All right guys, so there it is, all completed. Got that front flap on, the one that's hinged. It's looking real good. It honestly turned out a little cleaner than I expected. I, I kind of thought it was gonna turn out good, but maybe not completely perfect, but I'm, I'm honestly very happy with it. Um, everything seems to function well, which was the main thing. My old drawers were pretty stiff. I had to really pull on them to get them out. And these are, uh, I mean, a huge upgrade from the old setup I had I and mean, I'm extremely happy with them. We'll show you what it looks like in the truck. Here they are in the truck. Got the front bolted down. I used those factory seat holes. I mean then those brackets that I had made for the original system uh, and just bolted them in. I will be adding some angle brackets in the back here to secure it to that piece of wood just to keep it from being able to rattle around at all. You can see that board that's all you see of it sticking there, but that's what really uh, leveled it out and made the drawer sit nice. Full extension, doesn't hit the door. And then at this point, uh, especially since this is wood, if you wanted, you had a fridge on a fridge slide or something of that nature, you could screw your fridge slide to this, um, and then your fridge could slide out and tilt or however your slide works. I don't have the sound deadening yet. Uh, I am gonna sound deaden this whole wall 
and that'll just make it look a little better. Once you load this up with gear, you're not even really gonna be able to see that back wall anyways, so I'm not too concerned about it. All right guys, so that's it for the uh, rear seat delete build. I hope this is a good step-by-step -step for you guys to be able to do the same to your own truck, or maybe give you some ideas to do to a 4Runner or something like that. Being able to build with 8020 extrusion is pretty awesome. Kind of unlocks a lot of possibilities when it comes to custom storage solutions in your vehicle. So thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and we'll see you next time.